Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Open Doors with Lori, tips for buyers and sellers. So today I have uh, on this episode uh, Vince Capelli of the Capelli Hardy Pillar to Post team. Uh, He is a home inspector. And today he is going to give us um, some details of what happens at a home inspection, um, because that is a very important piece of the um, real estate transaction. So um, I want to introduce you to Vince Capelli. Thank you for coming. (laughs) Thank you for having me, Lori. I appreciate the opportunity. So any way that I can help. Yes. So the reason why I'm doing this series is because there are a lot of buyers and sellers right now that are they're doing transactions, but they really don't know what uh, what to expect, uh, how the whole process works. So I feel like if I put this video series together, put it out there, then people can use it as a resource if they're thinking about buying a home or selling. So uh, yeah. and as I said before, um, you are a home inspector. I'm going to let you talk about yourself and um, and then I'll just ask you some questions so that you could tell buyers and sellers what's going to happen at the home inspection. So tell us about sure. you. A little bit about me. Um, as you probably just noticed in the background, that's my dog, Sadie. Uh, she's a golden. <laughs> Hi, <Sadie. new> <laughs> she's, she's my cheerleader today. So I figured I'd talk about her for a second. But, yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I I've been doing inspections for almost six years now. Um, the previous owner, Dave Hardy, uh, my mentor, honestly the best boss I've ever had when it comes to Aww. just having a job. And if it wasn't for him, there'd be no way I'd be able to be able to do this, you know, oh, for people nice. and, and that expectation. So um, I love it. I mean, every day is new. You know, every day is a new day. Being able to help people, essentially, I have. You kind of take it for granted. So there's times when I go into a house and something that you and I know very well much about, like let's just Mm -hmm. say handrails for three steps or more Mm -hmm. or GFCI where they need to be within six feet of water or outdoor locations. Mm -hmm. Those things aren't, you know, what your average person is thinking about. All that they're thinking about is essentially what color they're going to paint the walls, what, what, type of flooring they're going to put in or mm-hmm. do I hire, you know, a buddy of mine to help me move or do, should I hire a moving company? Those are the mm-hmm. things that you're mainly concerned about. And then, so when I come out and, and do the type of inspection that I always do, it's just when I, when I first started, Dave taught me stick to a routine and mm-hmm. never, you know, change a routine. That's how you miss things. Um, so it, it was difficult in the beginning, just trying to learn all the technical stuff. Um, but once you get past that hurdle and you find that routine and you stick to it, um, it's just the, the amount of peace of mind that I'm able to provide to people and also the way that you deliver the news that comes up is critical in this type yes. of transaction. So I've always said it's not what you say, but it's how you say it. So I could say, yes. you know, you just need a handrail here because code, not that I'm a code inspector, but a handrail says it or essentially mm-hmm. code is three steps or more. You should have a handrail. Um, that way you don't fall when you're walking down the steps. Or you could say, it, if you don't put that handrail right there, you're going to fall down and you're, everybody's going to die. And it's just, you never, you never do that. So just exactly put the out there and, and that's it. So I'm glad you said that because most buyers and sellers too, when it's time for the home inspection, everybody's very anxious and um, I've had buyers say to me, what if the home doesn't pass the inspection? So talk about that, because I always say the home doesn't pass or fail. Uh, but you you ex- you expound on that. Yeah. So I would I would say the same exact thing as you. So that with mm-hmm. me, there is no pass or fail inspection. The goal is not to essentially just find a bunch of issues so that the deal falls through. It's just to look for the way that i categorize it is there's maintenance things things that comes with Mm -hmm. every home you know there is no perfect home mine included Mm -hmm. um and then there's the way that i categorize it is you know so the summary of the report that's where i put the most important things such as Mm -hmm. damage safety functionality and anything that's near or end of life expectancy 
-hmm. The rest of it is what I kind of just mentioned where you can get those maintenance honey do list items along with pictures to help you find mm -hmm. where those things are along with some of the technology that we use now too with digital measured floor plans um, so that they could figure out furniture placement. I remember when I moved into my house, that floor plan probably would have been pretty good. Um, hang on one second. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So I love it. The, the floor plan would have been great because that sectional mm -hmm. that you see, mm -hmm. the words that you would have heard come out of my mouth, getting that down here was a mm -hmm. pain. I yeah. almost thought yeah. that it wasn't going to fit. So having that uh, is pretty cool. That um, is very and then, important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then appliance recall checks, owner's manuals, um, part numbers, life expectancies of all the appliances and mechanical systems. So there's there's a lot that we offer mm -hmm. on top of just the inspection report. Yes. And that's good that um, you said that because I, I tell my buyers that your home inspection report is like your owner's manual for your house. So they can, if they have questions, they can look at it. It's very similar to the owner's manual when you buy a used car. Um, you know, if you're having a problem with something, it's typically found in that owner's manual. So, you know, the fact that you give, um, you know, when things are expected, to, when their life expectancy uh, is close, then they know we should be budgeting for this item because it's old. I also right. tell inspector, I'm sorry, I tell my buyers that age is not necessarily a deficiency. So if the roof is old, but there's no active leaks, then we can't say anything to the seller about as far as negotiating that. Um, right. right. And I do, um, I do like the fact that there is a way to deliver the uh, <laughs> the findings of your home inspection to the buyer because a lot of buyers, especially the, the buyers I work with, I work with a lot of first time buyers. So they're afraid. They've been renting for a long time and they're very uh, comfortable with calling the landlord if something fails. And then they realize, you know, this is on me now. So, you know, they get very nervous if there's anything wrong with the house. So I, I, I do say you're buying a used house. So there's going to be normal wear and tear, but we're looking for active leaks in the roof, um, you know, faulty electric, you know, that kind of thing. And right. I, I also say, too, to my buyers is that sellers don't inspect their homes like sellers don't go up in the rafters. Sellers don't go up on the roof. And so the seller doesn't know that they may or may not have a um, major defect. They, they don't know. They don't they don't inspect for active leaks and things like that. Right. So um, tell me, like, give me a, a, a list, like give me a little bit of what your routine is that you do when you um, uh, do a home inspection. And I, I've been to a few. Yeah. You are laser focused. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a balance. So like, and mm -hmm. one thing that I like to do is if say the client is there, which I always encourage, I think it's mm -hmm. just best for them to attend mm -hmm. and kind of do what I call like on the job training. Um, mm -hmm. in a way. So it's, it's almost as if they, they get an opportunity for, um, like to be able to shadow me. And I always encourage that the only two places they not allowed to go is the roof and then mm -hmm. the attic spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, but my normal routine is I, I normally start as long as weather permits, I start on the outside of the home. I do a, I, I go around twice. So I'll go, I, I go clockwise once and then I go counterclockwise, um, wide. So I'll go close mm -hmm. and then I go wide. Essentially, mm -hmm. what I'm looking for is like up close, I'm looking for your maintenance things or or any significant deficiencies with like the siding, the windows, the trim, the walkways, the driveways, the gutters, the downspouts. I mean, it just goes on and on and on with mm -hmm. what goes through this, this mind mm -hmm. um, when it comes to owning a home. And then when I stand wide, I'm kind of looking for are the gutters sloping towards the downspouts the way that they're supposed to? Is there any siding that is missing that I didn't see up close when I was standing mm -hmm. um, doing the first round. And then, and then if the roof, depending on um, how steep it is and how it's, how the house is designed, usually I like to walk every roof that I can safely do. So mm -hmm. um, I just think there's nothing better than being able to see the shingle up close and personal um, along with the flashings, which that's usually where the first place the roof leak would occur. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And, 
and so normally that would be like the outside inspection and then once i go inside i start from the highest floor and i work my way down the whole point of that is just to essentially um but the way that i like to think of it is when you're running the plumbing with the bathrooms mm -hmm. the kitchens mm -hmm. and things like that the goal mm -hmm. is hopefully during the inspection we find well i don't want to find anything but <laughs> the goal is just to uh if there's a leak we find it during the inspection if it's like That's leaking cool. onto the ceiling yeah. one example I'll, I'll use is i had somebody contact me um just wondering if i tested something while i was there because they moved in about six months after so it took okay. a while for them to officially oh. close and move in okay mm -hmm. um the, the house was occupied uh, but when they moved in, they essentially, the wife took a bath in the Whirlpool tub. She was in it for about 40, 45 minutes. That's what I was told. Mm -hmm. And then when she came downstairs after she dried off and everything, she noticed mm -hmm. that the entire living room was flooded. Oh, and I, wow. and from an inspection standpoint, like I, it's devastating. And I, that's yeah. news that I never want to hear like from like, mm -hmm. did I, did I, do something wrong like mm -hmm. you know i can't predict things to go wrong but essentially um you know i went through my camera roll and, and that's why we take so many pictures and yeah i had a picture showing that you know i essentially i turn the whirlpool tub on once it's filled run it for a few minutes and then i turn it right back off mm -hmm. but i'm i don't run it for 45 minutes i guess gotcha yeah and so that that amount of stress is what caused the line to break oh, i see and it's just, it's a, you know, a freak yeah. accident. And yes. so you try your best, but mm -hmm. you'll never. But things come up. Yeah. Yeah. You, things come up even after, you know, I can do a full on inspection and tell you everything that mm -hmm. you might need to know. And then the very next day, something could break. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. That that's kind of like how it is with uh, life. And it's just called welcome to home ownership. <laughs> like yeah. one day everything works like currently right now. Um, our air gave out uh, a few weeks ago on the hottest oh, wow. day. So <laughs> that's when you need it most. Yeah, that's that usually makes sense. But yeah, it's right. been a hot summer. It and has been very hot. And we probably have been, you know, overusing it or whatever. So yeah, so those kind of things happen. They do scare buyers. Um, but you know, I, I encourage people, buyers to, you know, if they're concerned, get a home warranty. Um, you know, tuck some money in your savings so that if something does um, fail, you know, you can replace it. Um, so typically a home inspection lasts about how long? For me, on, on average, with, with all the things that we're doing now, so like we do a 360 tour mm -hmm. um, along with the inspection. It, it's on average right now about two to three hours mm -hmm. um, for anything under 3,500 square feet. Okay. Once once you go above 3,500 square feet, the inspection usually takes a little bit longer just because of there's usually mm -hmm. more than one furnace, more than one water heater, yeah. more than one electrical panels. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's usually where it, where it adds up. And I usually joke, the bigger the home, the more bathrooms you got. And I usually spend a lot of my time in the bathroom, and it's not even because I'm going to the bathroom, but it's just, <laughs> I'm in there a while just because. Just mm -hmm. you wouldn't you wouldn't even think about it, but just like the toilets, the sinks, the drains, yeah. the water line, just yeah, it's a lot to look at, but it's it's great. I love it so. And I could tell you love it because I've I've seen how you allow my buyers to follow you around, and let them ask you questions, and then they take notes, so they feel more at ease because they know this you know, could be an issue, but here's something that we can do right away when we move in to, right. um, to, you know, yeah. fix it. And I always say too, to my clients that a major defect doesn't necessarily mean um, that the transaction is going to fall apart. Uh, sellers, like I said, sellers don't know that their roof may have an active leak. Uh, that happened to me before um, because the inspector went up in the rafters and, you know, they could see uh, that there was it was moist. It was wet and um, there had mold and everything had set in. But what the sellers decided to do was to escrow funds to the buyer to repair that um, that roof. Yeah. So, 
you know, I, you know, so there's no reason to be afraid of it. It's definitely a necessary part of the transaction. Uh, the other thing that's very good that I know you do is you give a very thorough report. So let's just say you met with them, you answered their questions, and then a couple of hours later, they're going to get a report from you and it'll have everything that you talked to them about so they can read it in detail. Uh, I also tell people don't freak out because it is going to be like 30 to 40 pages of a right, right. lot of issues. But, you know, just like if you buy a used car, you know, you're going to have to replace the brakes uh, at some point or get new tires or uh, get an oil change. Those are just um, what I call normal wear and tear. I always um, am looking for major defects. And do you know, do you do you talk about what a major defect is or you just leave that to the realtors? <laughs> Um, no, I, I, so one thing that I always do is, and I, I tell mm -hmm. every client that, especially if they attend the inspection, like the one I did mm -hmm. this morning, um, he's out of state. I've already done a couple inspections for him. So he mm -hmm. kind of knows what to expect from me. Um, he's an investor. So I work with investors too, um, that just want their house inspected. But essentially what I do mm -hmm. is I go over the report. And then one thing that I always ask in the beginning of the inspection and at the end, in the beginning of it, I say, is there anything here that you are specifically concerned about or had questions that you may have mm -hmm. noticed prior to me even being here? Mm -hmm. And that question is really just so that their concerns are answered while I am there. Yes, that's very the good. The final question, after going over the review of, you know, the, any major defects, whether it's damage, safety, functionality, life expectancies, like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. that at the very end of that, I say, do you have any questions? Is there anything here that you would like to see in person so that you can mm -hmm. kind of, you know, it's like reading a book. I, I never read books until I started doing inspection reports. And it's like, <laughs> like reading a short book every day. Uh, yeah. But I've got, I've gotten used to it. And I'm the author of, of every inspection report. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, it's crazy, just like how things yeah. fall into place. But yeah. um, so the and the way that I do, so there's different types of reports out there too. So like the types of reports that I write compared to some of my competitors reports is I, I don't do checklist reports where, mm -hmm. you know, whether if you say marginal or satisfactory, mm -hmm. um, that's great for some people. And maybe it's easier for some realtors to understand what's more important, what's not. Mm -hmm. um, but, but to me, I think there can be sometimes a misinterpretation as to if you were to ask me to define marginal, I honestly, right. that's wouldn't different really for everybody. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what I do is what's called narrative inspection reports. So it's just where I kind of describe an issue and I explain why it should be repaired or replaced or maintained. Um, so like, let's say if it's a leak underneath of a sink, mm -hmm. I'll say at the end of that or the next sentence would be, or say would this should be repaired to prevent further leakage and or unwanted you know mold related issues or something like mm -hmm. that just as an example as cause and effect right so um rather than just say leak below sink repair you're right sure that'd be, that would make my job really short and sweet mm -hmm. but i like to make sure that when reading it there's no confusion so that that's is all. that's good and um, when when we talk about, uh, you mentioned it a little bit, but when we talk about like how when we, when I pull up in a driveway, I always look at the roof, the windows, the foundation, what the siding looks like. So I could even point those things out, you know, just showing it before mm -hmm. we even write an offer, um, showing things. Um, so if I know my client has an FHA loan or a VA loan or a USDA loan, I know that there's certain things that um, that particular appraiser is going to want. And you mentioned it already, GFCI outlets, um, handrails, no peeling, chipping paint. Yep. So I have, sometimes there's confusion between what a home inspector does and what the appraiser does. So can you give like a, a clear distinction that you are the yeah. uh, inspector and the appraiser is the appraiser? I, I get that a lot. Yeah. So essentially uh, I'm not, I'm not 
an appraiser appraiser so mm -hmm. essentially what they do is, is they come out they're looking for your depending on the loan like mm -hmm. sometimes from what i've heard like if, the, if it's a conventional loan mm -hmm. um and they're gonna the potential buyer is gonna leave a 20 percent down payment they're usually not as concerned with i guess the or safeguarding the, the property before it's right. put up i think right. the reason behind it and you'd probably be able to answer this better than me but Mm -hmm. I think it's just because of the liability with someone mm -hmm. who leaves such a lower down payment. Right. If something <laughs> were to go wrong, like whether yeah. it's wire slices and mm -hmm. a fire were to start, or if there's mold, peeling paint and peeling paint, the reason behind that is, is if, if the house is built within a certain pe time period, there's right. what's lead, called lead paint. Yeah. So they're worried about kids eating it and things like that. Right. But, <laughs> So yep. you, you kind of already said it. I've kind of said it. That's mainly what they look for. And then on mm -hmm. top of that, they figure out what the house is worth based on current market value and comparisons mm -hmm. and things like that. Right. So that's what, that's what they do. And then what I do is I essentially, I don't enforce anything. So I can't enforce right. someone to put a hand row up. I can't mm -hmm. make someone repair a wall that's bowing in the basement. Mm -hmm. um, or, or if the basement's flooding because of all the rain that we've been getting, mm -hmm. I can't make someone do anything. It's just mm -hmm. information. That's, that's right. all I'm there to do is just to give yes. information, yeah. be the messenger, and then what they decide to do with that information. And they can mm -hmm. always use me as a resource. Mm -hmm. um, I even tell people like, if, if you forget how I showed you how to light the fireplace, yeah. You can call anytime and I'll, I'll <laughs> play it over the phone if I need to. Yeah. I've even gone back. I've gone back to houses that people have wow. moved into to help them light a fireplace because I just think that's yeah. the reputation that you carry. And, and that's, yeah. I don't know, there's just something about doing things that other people won't, you know. It's not always you, about it. You do have, yes, you do have very good customer service. And so, like, when, um, when realtors... Um, you know, use certain vendors. We are always looking at are they how are they going to make our customers feel? Because everybody that's connected to us, or if we recommend a vendor, then that's going to reflect on us. So right. um, you you are you know definitely one of those ones that you know when they say oh well, you have you heard of you know pillar to post? I'm like yes, excellent services. So yeah, you know. Um, and I will say, uh, too, and you explained that perfectly, but like what you do between um, different from the appraiser, those are two, your two third party um, individuals that come into this transaction. And um, and it, it does get very confusing. The appraiser mostly works for the lender, but you work for the buyer. I work for, yeah, whoever is hiring me to do the service. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. like I, I've had instances where, uh, it, it could always make it, you know, it's just all about how you react to it. And that's something that you just kind of get better at mm -hmm. through time. So, mm -hmm. um, so like when, when some, like say a seller is there and they're like, well, is my house burning down anytime soon? And, <laughs> and you, re I really can't tell them anything that right. because I, I don't want to say the house is great. And then I give her an inspection. Right. The yeah. And yeah. the buyer's like, well, I want. ABC fix before I moved in and the seller's yeah. like, well, the inspector said it was great. Yeah. I'm not fixing anything. And yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to say that, but you don't want to give too many comments. Yeah. Right. So you just, you know, you just kind of every, and that's the other thing too, is like every, every person that you represent or work for, mm -hmm. you, you have to feel the room. That's, that's a big part of what I do. And I'm sure what you do too is you have to feel the room because everybody has different expectations. Correct. Um, there, there's some who, you know, they just, they just got divorced. They lost their job. They are going through it all right now. And all mm -hmm. they want is a roof over their head and that's all mm -hmm. they care about. Mm -hmm. And then there's others who are on the other side of the spectrum where, you know, they want a broken door stopper to be repaired before they move mm -hmm. in because they don't want to have to worry about anything. <laughs> that's just, that's, mm -hmm. To be honest, it's just unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. So I try mm -hmm. my best just to set the expectation of what I'm here to yeah. do. Yeah. And then what they do with that is is up to them. So that's very good information. Thank you so much. I do I do tell my buyers, you know, you have to be realistic. Um, it's a it's a used house. And I tell my sellers, 
Don't be offended because there is going to be, there's going to be a lot of things, a lot of issues that are found. Um, the inspector's not out to get you. The buyers are not out to get you. It's just a report and yeah. everything can be negotiated. You know, even if there is a major defect, what I find is that um, home inspectors, you're trained to find everything, even the minor things. Yeah. Nowadays. So, yeah. It, yeah. It never used to be like that from yeah. what I, like, bef like from before, before I started. Yeah. yeah. Before I started, it never used to be like that. It used to mm -hmm. be just major elements. So like roof, yes. structure, HVAC, yes. plumbing, yeah. and electrical. That's it. Now you all flag if the uh, doorbell doesn't work. I was just Excuse about me. to say that, yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> and you don't necessarily wrote, flag it, but you do have to report that. Yeah. The doorbell if, doesn't if, work. If it's the wireless doorbell, I, I never say anything because I don't know if those are staying. But if it's the one that's wired, <clears> excuse me. like today, mm -hmm. I don't make a big deal about it. But right. I, I put, it's in the report that the doorbell was not working. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, again, what they do with that, it's it also shows on, on one side, it's like, man, this guy nitpicks everything. But it's really right, not Right. That's what they... That. It really isn't. It's like yeah, you have your just, protocols and things you have to follow. Right. So and, and I yeah. think in, in some ways it just shows the the thoroughness of the inspector. Not mm -hmm. not because I like writing short reports. I think the shortest I've ever written was fifteen pages. Oh, wow. And I was like, man, this is like the Taj Mahal. I wish they were. I wish they were all like all this. like. <laughs> yeah, because ten of those pages is just describing what the house is made of. Mm -hmm. because we're, we're, our standards of practice we're required mm -hmm. to say what type of siding what type of roof what type of structure mm -hmm. and that that takes up a good portion of the inspection report mm -hmm. and then the rest of it is where the issues and stuff are so yeah well is there anything you want to add uh you you've given a lot of great information i know it's going to be helpful to my buyers and sellers that see this uh anything in particular you want to add um trying to think uh, i can maybe tell you like like one of the funniest things or craziest things i've seen or, oh please uh, do i love those and then don't yeah. forget to say that you know you are the uh owner or soon to be owner of your sure. team I'll yeah you to, no, i could do that, that. Um, okay <laughs> so i mean the, the, the list i can talk for hours of just you know when you're going into someone else's home you never really know what to expect Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I mean that respectfully, it's just, you know, when you're going into a stranger's home, sure, you'll see some things to say the least. So, um, professionally I I've seen, you know, I I've gone into bathrooms and they're using the lift, uh, the bathtub as like a litter box. I've seen that for, <laughs> I have a couple cats of my own you've seen already. So, um, <laughs> but a bathtub as a litter box, okay. not great. It, uh -huh. it solidified the, the litter actually solidified. The, the trap oh, like concrete no. yeah so that was more involved than they expected okay. but, so there's cause and effect <laughs> litter doesn't mm -hmm. mix with, you know. and Water, then i've gone yeah. into homes when it comes to just living situations um one story i love telling is uh there was an, an older guy that i was doing a pre-listing inspection mm -hmm. where not just in short when you're going to sell your house you hire a home inspector I tell mm -hmm. you any potential things that might need to be addressed and what you do with yeah. that. You can fix it or don't fix it and give that mm -hmm. to the potential buyer up to them. Yes. Very good idea. He, he hired me essentially just to come out. His realtor referred me. Um, I inspected the property and he kept asking me if I was hungry. And I'm like, oh, I'm okay. I was mm -hmm. like, thank you though. And mm -hmm. and then he would ask me again and 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 then I'd be like, no, I'm all right. I think I appreciate, I was like, if I start eating, I'll stop working. And mm -hmm. and so um, I felt bad. So then he asked me again, and I don't know if he was just forgetting or if he just really wanted to feed uh, me. I know right. I'm, I'm a senior guy and this job keeps me, yeah. you know, tiny from going into crawl spaces. <laughs> uh, so he asked, he's like, are you hungry? I'm like, sure. What do you got? And I, and I already inspected his kitchen. I looked in his fridge already. You don't have much. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, uh, he goes in his fridge and he and he pulls out a jar of pickles. And he's like, you want a pickle? And I'm like, oh, sure, I'll I'll take a pickle. So I take it, and I Aww. and I thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. 
If you have any questions, oh. I'm holding a prickle in my If you have any questions, you can contact me anytime. And I never thought that would be in the job description. So then right. I went I went to my car. I'm getting ready to go to the next one. Mm -hmm. And I Google on my phone, do pickles go bad? Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can keep them for a while. So then right. I, I said, as long as nothing's growing on them, you can eat it. So <laughs> I, had a, I had a pickle on my way. Ate some, ate some bubble gum or <laughs> gum before I got the next one. And that was it. And it made my day awesome. because it was just, yeah. you know, something that you would never expect. I've I seen know. crazier than, that's not even crazy, but that was just like a fun. That's very cute. That yeah. Happened. He so, just wanted yeah. to be hospitable. Right. <laughs> and I don't know if he forgot, you know, he was, he was an older guy. But older really guy. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's cute. So, um, and then, yeah. So like I said, I've been doing this about six years now. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a journey getting here, just, you know, and I am the current owner of the company. Um, I love what I do. It's to be 20, 27. I almost forgot how old I was. Oh my gosh. You're yeah. a baby. I'm That's a, a baby, really, yeah. that is I a really joke. great. <laughs> I'll say I just shaved, so I'm a day under 40, but um, because sometimes that too, going back, mm -hmm. what you look like, people will always judge before you even mm -hmm. open your mouth. And mm -hmm. that's just, that's why your first impression is the most important. That's right. Uh, so yeah. leaving that impression and then not that the goal is to prove anybody wrong, but just to do the same thing as you always do mm -hmm. when you're running a business, that's, that's critical, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and setting yourself apart from everybody else. So I've done inspections where people have said, Oh my God, you're my inspector. And I'm like, <laughs> That's me. And then I'll say, I just shaved. I'm a day under 40 to kind of break the ice. Right. <laughs> and that there's one in particular that I, I didn't think I was going to make it through because mm. she was just so upset that I was her inspector. And then by the end of the inspection, after I went over everything that, mm -hmm. you know, that was found, she apologized for essentially how she was towards me mm -hmm. and said that I should have never judged you and, and, Wow. You know, you, you, you go through those things, but honestly, you have to go through adversity in order to, to, to know, like, man, I got through that. I can get through yeah. anything else that comes up. So it's, it's yeah. pretty cool. And it's That's honestly the all nature. about right? That is the nature of this business. There's all kind, and it helps us grow. So yeah, yeah that's all part yep. of it. And you pass that test. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, so Thank you so much for this information. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm sure actually, it's going to be very beneficial to all the buyers and sellers out there that see this. And your contact information is uh, on the screen as well as mine. And so when people have questions, they can reach out to you or me and um, you know you can help them with their home inspection needs. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Lori, for having me. It was a pleasure. I know I probably rambled a little bit, but no, it was all <laughs> I, good. I get excited about it. So it's all good. Yeah, so. that means you like it. Yeah, that's good. You're excited about it. <laughs> yep. yep. Well, thank you, Lori. Thank you. You have a good rest of your day. You too. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of Open Doors with Lori uh, Tips for Buyers and Sellers. Thank you.